We are uh, spending our time in this video just talking about the quirks that are already pre-existing in the world of My Hero Academia and seeing what we can do to further improve on them considering like where we are in the arc, which is the provisional license exams. A lot of the characters have already developed their quirks in a way to understand and how to use it better. One example being Kaminari and his disc throwers to be able to like use that to track like where he can shoot like individual like shots of his lightning. To Bakugo like using like small concentrations of area in his palm to shoot like blasters. I actually um, wanted to start this uh, discussion off with just talking about Raka actually because she is in a very interesting like situation where she has combat training, mm -hmm. despite like what her quirk is able to do, which yeah. is to simply float. And like, it, it, it's good. It makes her a more well-rounded hero, just like um, Bracer Head. Yeah. Where he has more of a distance quirk. Ability, a distance surprise attack ability, but he's also able to hold his own in against combat. 40 plus people. My thing with Iraq is that um, over time, she will like get nauseous. Mm -hmm whether it be she be floating on something or she's floating something ind independently and it just depends on the size of it yeah so i was thinking I think her limit was like three tons or some shit like that three tons that's yeah. still quite a lot that's a lot dude like it was some ridiculously huge amount that she can muster yeah her quirk was would be more originally more something you could see in more rescue work where she would be able to like lift like parts of buildings just and debris to save other people. I think that'll actually come to play like as the, the arc comes in later. But I was thinking how could she like work better if she decides to go the combat route? I think a great application would be if she actually carries heavier weapons on her that she can apply like a lighter um, touch to. She just walks around with a big ass fucking minigun. <laughs> she has the pack mule for from fucking Fallout. <laughs> She's able to carry great burdens. <laughs> is that two miniguns? Hachiko has a limit of the amount of weight that may be nullified, which is around three tons. Wow, dude. She could just carry around three tons of bullets for a minigun. She can just carry a Harrier jet on her shoulder and just like... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I was thinking like web whether it be like distance weapons like guns or even like bladed weapons, like she could carry like a she can be like too many swords. Too she can have too many swords. That lizard carries too many swords. <laughs> That's a lot of strength from him. She could be like a really fast like com combat like unit if she really wanted to. And I guess she can still move well in heels, so I wanna get rid of that. <laughs> Although I kinda wonder like would she be able to like manifest flying in her floating state? She'd probably be able to yeah, like thrusters. Yeah, maybe get like some momentum going, like how the whole f flying power that we were talking about previously yeah. would work. So she could apply the same thing. Cause she has floated and just kind of like spun around. Maybe her float quirk is very, if not the same as like our application for the flight quirk. Mm -hmm. However, it seems like she can't control her velocity. Right, or like how she spins or anything like that. Mm -hmm. She's just weightless. Murder hero. <laughs> Uravity. <laughs> Have you seen this woman? She's dangerous. If you see her floating, maybe just maybe just call the cops or something. <laughs> <laughs> if you see this woman and her double miniguns, run. Run very far and very fast. Yes. Do not approach. Do not engage. <laughs> Comply with all demands. She become a bad guy. She would. What are you gonna do? <laughs> Bagu comes in, mows down. Toru comes in, mows down. Tetsu, slowly mows down. Well, Tetsu Tetsu was only able to take like what? Like twelve was, shots. Yeah, I'd say about twelve shots before he started whittling. Yeah, so it would be a couple, but with the mini guns, like oh. He would be mowed down. Everyone just gets mowed down, especially since she has too many guns. Aizawa, she has a handgun. <laughs> it's like, damn it. 
She's still dangerous. That's why she just carries around flash grenades. No, smoke grenades. Smoke. He can't erase your quirk if he can't see you. And you don't need to see him to just fucking lay waste to everything inside that cloud. Dude, rock is terrible. And here's the She's thing. She's scary. She doesn't have to make the bullets float. She doesn't have to, like, carry them on her back, like, in a backpack. She could just attach a cart to, like, a waistband, and the cart just rolls. And the <laughs> contents inside of it are weightless. Mm -hmm. If he erases her quirk, just the miniguns are heavy. And I'm pretty sure she can carry one minigun. I would figure that she wouldn't even have to, like, put the extra effort. Like, if just if it's already floating, she's just, like, it's literally just, like, dragging over like she's in the space station. And just do it. Like, yeah, because the bullets are weightless. There's no recoil. Yeah, just like... Actually, there would be because the the thrust from the gas. Oh, okay. From the explosion. All right, very well. Fair point. So I think there would actually be more recoil. Because oh, the weight of the of the minigun isn't there to compensate. Oh, mate. So there'd be more recoil, but mm. I'm pretty sure she could just hold it down. Maybe just have some extra tripods or something like that. <laughs> Yeah, if, it was, if it was a stationary gun, there'd be zero recoil because it would just, it would just go a, into the ground. You go into the ground. But yeah, if you if you erased her quirk, then everything would have weight again. Yeah, is the thing. That's the issue. So, yeah. so, so carry she wouldn't be able to carry the two mini guns, but I'm pretty sure she'd be strong enough to carry one. Maybe, maybe just like one sub. Like I said, flash bang and a smoke grenade. All right, back to business. I think the last person I'd actually work with would be Todoroki, though. Right now, like, he's already a powerhouse, and whatever he can come up with, he'll come up with himself. I think the issue is just trying to use both t quirks in tandem. If he could use his quirks in tandem, he could definitely be, what's it called? He can be a very well-rounded hero, mm -hmm. based on the fact that he could do frontal assaults like he's been doing. Oh. He's an excellent tactician, as yeah. he's shown, but he could also be, uh, what's it called? Very covert one. Yeah. Because if he were to use the ice and the fire at the same time, he could create smoke screens. He could create steam. Oh, a little bit more of a traditional like way he can do combat is like with an ice spear and like a flame lance. Because you can do that. He can he can create a flame lance based on like what his father can do. He was walking up those walls, jump towards that Nobu, and just like chuck the spear of uh, flames at him and impaled it. <laughs> He did run up a wall by melting <laughs> footholds into it. It was great. And that's what pro heroes do. They take these uh, fucking floor level quirks and start running up walls with them. <laughs> You'll find out later on, he does give himself a bit of flight too. Um, not Todoroki, but his dad, Endeavor. Good old fashioned fucking uh, Zuko flight. Yeah, but not like, it's not OP or anything like that. It's more like a, I can float. I can stay like this for a bit. <laughs> I'm trying to think of other people. I mean, Kaminari different. already has his, like, kind of figured out. I would like to give him the electric sword he wanted. Yeah. It's very much so pot Or just, hell, like, he can make a spark and make a flame sword if he wanted to. He's a very, um, what's it called? A te uh, Tesla rifle. Oh, shit. He could drive in Teslas. <laughs> he can make a Tesla rifle where it just shoots elect electrical bolts. Yeah. And granted, he would still have his limit on how much he could fire, but if, it's really fast and it's very direct, and he doesn't have to worry about his uh. That is super cool, actually. His, his uh, um, sharpshooter. Yeah, he wouldn't have to thing. worry about like shooting a, an individual plate. Mm -hmm. So maybe that might come in later on, but I do like the idea of it as just like a very novice hero just trying to understand his quirk. Bakugo's goes really hard to work on as well because. He's already a very bright, bright young man to where he can, he's yeah, he finding can. several different ways to utilize his quirk. I guess my question is, is he only able to secrete it through his hands? Uh, yes. Damn. All right. It says in his quirk that he secretes it, secretes the nitroglycerin through his palms. Could he possibly store it into other parts of his body, or at least like store it in something just like the gauntlets, but like place it somewhere else, like on his body, like his feet? Yeah, of course. Um, his hand grenades. Uh, yeah. That he gave Kaminari. That yeah. was a store of the. Oh yeah, that explosive. was. That's super cool. That's why that explains all the things around him. Mm -hmm. All the grenades on his. Granted, waistband right here. Yeah, granted though, like he already has a lot of mobility, just like with his palm by itself. He's able to like fly with them. Yeah. So there's no need to use his 
gracefully as well. Yeah, but I guess like a limitation for him is the fact that like he has to move his arms in a different direction. What if he had like the ability to like um, create explosions like at different parts of his body at whim? So if he wanted to just like, I think that'd be more taxing on him than yeah. anything else because he. Mm, Unless you could store up a lot of it. Because it's a matter of knowing how to set different ignition points on his hand uh, to affect those other areas. And then he'd have to memorize those ignition points. Yeah, that's right. And the fact that, like, his palm is literally just explosion cities. So if he's not careful, careful about it, then something could happen. Mm -hmm. Or it just, like, blows a fuse somewhere else. I think what he's come up with now is actually optimal. Because there are very much limits to what can be done. Yeah, but it's so powerful, too. Mm -hmm. Like, just by himself, he's able to create huge explosions. And, like, his gauntlets are only to supplement, like, the, the strain of it and gather it at once. Not to mention, like, you don't want to get backhand by that. Oh, no. I'm thinking about other characters. Ida, if the thrust from his calves can be moved somewhere else... Because he has six per calf. If he were to have... Two is just a standard exhaust for his calf. Mm -hmm. Two ported to more of his waist. And then another two ported towards, like, his arms and whatnot. Elbows. He can... Yeah, like, his elbows, that way it creates more of a... Yeah, like, it, if he a, wants to actually do, like, punching movements. Like an actual punch. He would have a lot more thrust in it if it's back here because it'll give that initial push... I guess so, to his, yeah. To the forward momentum of the punch. It's, I think it'd still work with, like, his feet, too, like, if he was grounded as well. But, I mean, yeah, you're right. I think Tailman can actually get a little bit of an upgrade. Maybe, like, do something more with that tail instead of it being, like, just a naked thing. Mm. Maybe just, like, do some armor plating on it, if possible. Just strengthen that tail even more. Well, it's already super fucking strong. I mean, yeah, tails are really strong. So, I guess... Where he would have to improve on is just more like martial arts, like with applications with his tail. Yeah, actually improve on his martial arts without his tail. Because Uses he's already skilled with it. He needs to build his ability outside of just relying on his tail because his tail can only be in one spot at once. Or use his tail for like more of a like a mobility like support. If his tail was able to like spring him forward somewhere, or be able to like retract back and like pull him back. From a situation immediately where his feet are already preoccupied in a certain motion mm. maybe or i'll just give that tail a staff <laughs> and we'll see how that works momo's good she's momo's just it depends on how she wants to go and there's so many variables just based on how she can go about it yeah she she's good with what she does um jiro jiro has room for improvement in the aspect of she's already working on it she has her shin speakers and then her, uh, um, I guess, amplifying yeah, like gauntlets. The, the gauntlet, am the amplifying gauntlets that she can use in other positions. However, I th think she should have a forward and fork to act as more of a directional speaker. Oh, uh, yeah. Just like how Present Mike has one. But his is only straight forward because his comes from his. His voice. Yeah, it comes from his voice. It pretty much goes. And it doesn't even go wherever he's like. It goes where his neck is. Yeah. Is situated. His collarbone's orientation is where it goes. So he limited himself on that. Granted, he's a pro hero and he found he could find a ways around it. But she has the gift of being able to use her hands with her with her ability. With her ability. So she can have more range in where she wants to attack. Mm -hmm. And if she's able to and has the focus to be able to use both simultaneously accurately. Because you can use both easily. That's not hard. But accurately firing two things at once in separate areas is a very hard thing to do. As anyone who's ever played a gun cabinet game with both guns will quickly find out. I've tried that before. I played the Terminator Salvation game. Ugh. And I tried using both guns. And I did well. But I found that it took me a while to like zero in on tar on two targets at once with two separate guns. I don't really have much I can add to Jiro then. Uh, it's just, it's about about applying like those ear jacks to like things on, like on our person mm -hmm. in combat situations. I can't really see much of like in rescue, but... Cause she, she already 
Yeah. She already does everything that she possibly could with rescue. That's just listen for everything. That's mm. that's just like the basic of her ability. Yeah. The idea is how can it be used in a more combative and defensive manner as well. Ashido. That's a tough one because it's all down to her palms, right? Very similar to Bakugo, except yeah. it's excreting acid. She's already found like a really interesting way to apply it and just create like an acid shield. Mm -hmm. A thing that she could do to improve her usage of it is do as Bakugo did. Have disposable canisters for it. It will increase her range in a more specified spot. Or maybe, maybe something that can like shoot projectiles up her acid so that she doesn't have to worry about like long range like she has to. And maybe we could focus on just veils. Something like the gauntlets that Bakugo has. Maybe just store up acid there. I don't know what kind of compound you'd want to use, but... I think with that it would be too dangerous because it's such a high volume. Because she would need like smaller grenades with her acid inside of it because a liquid splatter takes up a lot more room than just an explosion mm -hmm. because the liquid splatter will want to keep its momentum going this way so when it hits it's going to spread like that as opposed to an explosion which will expand in, oh, yeah. in any direction it wants to and its destructive force on whatever it hits is just the fact that it wants to go this way as well mm -hmm. so a lot of force is being thrown this way that way everywhere but where it's going there's a high impact volume in a small area but the area that it, it hits receives a smaller amount because it's so spread out whereas with liquid you have a high a high area of damage with a lot of it but it takes up less volume of an area so it wouldn't be so much used for taking out a group of enemies as it would be to quickly just get through a wall or aid and escape or prevent one by acidifying the floor. And that's about as far as I think of it because as an attack, she's good with that. She knows how to make it a slipstream and very focused. Mm -hmm. And in terms of search and rescue, she's good with that because she can just melt through debris. All right, next on the list would be Tokiyami, right? I'm looking at Tokiyami, and I'm thinking like the way he applies his quirk with like the the, the Shadow Abyssal uh, body. I think that works. And I think it works incredibly well with what he is trying to make up for. Because Dark Shadow could be an additional extension like of his body, but also be that like honed armor. He or... just needs to control it better. Yeah, you're that's right. that's all he needs to do. If he can control it better. You could take it out a lot of people. He would be, he would be unstoppable. It sure, it certainly, it could be something like a, a certain muscle that you just practice over and over again. You just kind of get used to it. It's just an extension of the body. But Dark Shadow is also like a separate being mm -hmm. that like loses its personality. Like it has its, its own consciousness, mm -hmm. but it loses its consciousness like after the fact. So it would be something like to focus on Dark Shadow itself. I can imagine like having some kind of light on him in case things go awry. Mm -hmm. Flashbangs. Everyone just, just carries flashbangs. Yeah, it, it seems that flashbangs are the answers to everything in My Hero. Mineta. Oh shit, that one, this one's a hard one. He's able to produce like a lot of these like sticky like adhesive balls and have them grow back in a relatively good amount of time. Actually, almost near immediately. Virtually instant. Yeah. Yeah. I have a question though. Like, is he just born with that same length of hair, or does it grow? I think it's just that same length. But okay. Or it might grow with him. It's proportionate to his size, I guess. Because he has a lot of potential with that, in the sense it can stick to a lot of things. Up to 24 hours. It's okay. as sticky as like spiders and Spider-Man's like spider web. Uh -huh. I think a way we can do is like find a material that actually does not stick with it. I mean, I'm kind of going the Spider-Man route, but like maybe making them with the cartridges, so you can shoot like smaller streams of it. But we don't know if it cuts or blends. I'm just gonna go off of the assumption that it doesn't. That it it's has just, to stay in its form. It's because fearful. it's been smushed and just goes back to its form. Mm -hmm. So I'm just gonna go off the assumption that it's it stays in its form unless destroyed. And who knows how much it takes to destroy it? It might just dissolve over time. Yeah. He has applied a string to like all the balls, so he when he clicks them together, he uses it as a. Like a, like a whip. Stickable whip. I mean, that's that's one application. I can't really find others aside from like 
being the mighty putty of My Hero Academia. <laughs> he can literally sell himself and make profit. Mighty putty sticks onto everything. <laughs> I wonder, could he melt it down? I don't think he could. Damn. Like, there's a lot that we can assume he might be able to, but I'm just going to stick with the idea that it is what it is. It has its uses, but I wouldn't say much in the combat, se combat sense, and maybe some on the rescue. He's more suppression to where he can subdue the enemy. In terms of rescue, I don't see anything big that he could really... Outside of, like, prevention. Like, oh no, the dam's gonna break. I think with him, he needs to be paired up with someone. Mm -hmm. Someone who can like better use his quirk in certain situations. The question is, would be who at that point? That's something I'd put on the sh on the shelf and just like wait until further development. Motives, yeah. Development, yeah. Uh, all right, Shoji. This one's hard to figure out. First of all, it's so many arms that like maybe just like being swung at by all three of them would be that painful. But at the same time, it's also more of a Rakan since use mm -hmm. since he's able to create extra appendages and also be able to uh, speak through them and also see through them so he, can, he has six limbs not counting his legs so he has six arms and on those arms he can create any body part and with it whatever one body part he creates it actually has a higher effectiveness than what a normal person would have with theirs. So the eyes that he creates have better vision. The snows that he creates can smell better. Things like that. Um, oh, okay. And he could do he could create more than a single appendage. Mm -hmm. But the more that he creates on a single arm, the less effective it is. I feel like he's like one of those characters like you see what you get uh, unless you can really do something with those extra arms that can be applied like in like the workshop guns <laughs> just carry just carry six handguns at all time <laughs> no carry four handguns at all time and a shit ton of spare uh, clips and just use the extra two arms well the extra one arm on each side to reload the guns as needed oh he could be one of those like warriors like with the six blades you just like go to town. I'm like, oh god, dude. But uh, he also has kind of like a like a webbing between webbing between like his arms yeah. and stuff like that. In reality, he makes a really, really good defensive hero if his equipment matches him. If he were to wear uh like an armor or a fire blanket material on the outsides of his arms, he could definitely be an excellent rescue hero mm -hmm. an excellent rescue and defensive hero I offensive capabilities are what you see yeah are kind of limited but he has a lot of defense and support like as far as rescues and his, just... recon his reconnaissance and information gathering is top notch in the fact that he can create up to six eyes up to six ears mm -hmm. um, he can communicate with multiple people at once by creating different mouths so he can relay information. He can make an excellent tactician. If he were to focus mainly on that, on tactics, he would excel. But okay. like I said, if he had some sort of fire, well, like a heat resistant armor that he wore and kept on the outsides of his- Oh, it's like just entire body? Yeah, um, to protect, both protect himself and the insides of his arms, he could definitely be an excellent help during disasters he's already shown that he can cocoon people inside of his uh yeah his arms that he showed during the cavalry race mm -hmm. the cavalry battle so school incidents i would say a younger audience 12 and under mm -hmm. before they hit their growth spurts he can definitely protect a good number of them make an excellent teacher Cero. Cero. he's interesting because he's able to shoot out like one to three things of tape like with one yeah, so hand. far we've seen three three strands at once yeah he seems more of like a rescue type character but he also has like that really interesting spider-man application where he's able to actually use them to help him like move around not much attention being paid to him but he has a lot of applications i think 
can really work. Yeah, he has a lot of room to grow. Like his tape could really melt things together, whether that be to uh, strengthen uh, debris from falling or to incapacitate like his opponents. Mm -hmm. And he's really shown through. both of those skills. Yeah. I think maybe he needs to l do more combat with them. Mm -hmm. Kind of the way that uh, Eraser Head uses like his bands. That would work. Would it stick to himself? Well, I would say it's tape, so yeah. it, it would stick. But as long as he has something to cut them off, then... That way he doesn't stick himself, because he could use it in that same way. Mm -hmm. It showed that the downside of him overusing it causes dryness of skin Oof. and a certain amount of pain. Yeah, okay. He's definitely in the same realm as Mineta, to where it's really hard to find more applicable applicable uses outside of prevention. He has high mobility and it can retract, so he can definitely do better in terms of rescue and capture. He'd make Same. a good cop. Yeah, that's a good one. The gimmick of his is that, like, it's a cool mask and all, but it's all, like, tape dispenser. Yeah, it's tape dispenser. I fucking love that. It's so hilarious. Um, but there's really no way he can improve upon it, really. Because um, base form is like it has so many applications by itself that it can't really. If anything, over. if anything, he should he should have his costume set up to where it can already allow him to shoot it into his three. If he can set, if he can change the width of the tape that he shoots, oh, okay. he should definitely have it to where he creates just one narrow one as opposed to one really big one. If he needs. He can make it larger, that way it turns into the three to yeah. collect more in a single area. Next to what I see, I think those are the last bits of class uh, A uh, oh. that we haven't touched upon. Let's just double check though. Alright, so yeah, we have Koda, Sato, and Aoyama. Okay. Alright, so Koda, stop Ko being afraid. Also, just bring packs of dogs with you. Always have dogs. Police dogs. I think birds would be best for him. Um, and bugs. <laughs> well, bugs, there's a massive abundance of them literally everywhere. He literally talked to the ground like, listen, my dudes, I need you to do me a solid. But I do like the idea of like him maybe like having a pack of dogs like with him to do the things that he can't, like have the agility to incapacitate people. Fuck it, just have a condor. Okay. Have yeah. a big bird with, your, with him. Because the bird can do the recon for him. I don't know if they can talk back to him though. I don't know if he understands them. They just oh, yeah, understand right. him. He'd have to spend time training with them, I would yeah. say. A Simple really well trained condor. Okay, yeah. He applied a different like uh, aesthetic like with a mask on him. I'm not Make sure. Makes him look like a duck. It makes him look like a duck, and that's it. That's it. But I don't think it has any His ability to like communicate with animals and insects. Um, I'm not sure if spiders could be active. Spiders would be crazy. You know, he could have he could have a spider. He could have like a big old spider. And just have Charlotte spell things out for him. <laughs> oh my god. Overcome his shyness really and get over his fear of bugs. It's gonna be hard, but that's tough. That's the only thing I think of. But he's if, able to communicate with them too. Yeah, like, if, if anything, uh, if his duck bill had a speaker in it. Oh, he could be able to amplify. That like, way he his could reach. reach a further radius because. He can only communicate with whatever can hear him. Birds. I can see a murderer of crows being something to be fearful about. Just calling bats. Oh my god. <laughs> Playing the Batman, like, returns theme. You just see, through the massive, like, bats, you just see one big coda. Just <laughs> you just see a fucking duck in a, cloud of, <laughs> in a cloud of bats. His offensive... Defensive. He's a pretty big intelligence. Guy, so he could work that way. And rescue capabilities all depend on what animal he summons. He's gonna summon a whale. He's part Aquaman. He has that power. Sharks. Oof. I think if he just had like a really big bird with him, he could he, do a lot. It, do it well. definitely improve his information and uh, offensive capability. Mm -hmm. Or just have like different animals for different purposes as well. Just have like. Who's at his agency? Have a fucking menagerie. Yeah. Or the, with the, featuring the principal. Uh, we have Sato, Sato next. Sato is very difficult for me to imagine because 
it's kind of like a derivative of like All Might's ability in the sense that he can bulk up, but it's after he eats a certain amount of sugar. I think it's five grams. Five grams. It's a proportional exchange between the strength that he gains over time and the intelligence that he loses. Right. So and every five grams, I think, boosts his strength three times over ten minutes. At the end of okay. ten minutes, he'd have to eat another five grams, but that also cuts his intelligence. How do you? Make the most out of that strength. That's the question. Um, Without he would definitely need braces. Braces. Just like how Deku has the kickback souls. Oh yeah. Okay. He would need something that helps amplify his strength further. Okay. That way he doesn't need to consume as much sugar over as long a time, mm. because he's very much a time sensitive hero. Yeah. In that case, he might need some assistance too to support him. Mm -hmm. Someone who can like back up, like or cover for the strength, or even like other areas they can't cover, like all my could, um, like speed. In my opinion, he would make an excellent rescue hero in the fact that he could definitely move debris and mm -hmm. get into hard to reach places just by muscling his way through. And the fact that you don't need to be too smart to be able to perform these actions, he could keep that going. For a long time. Um, in terms of attack, you said braces, so I think that is mm -hmm. the best option. Maybe mm, he would also need some, um, if anything, something to boost his, his uh, movement speed. So braces for his arms for him to hit harder, and something to help blades. <laughs> and something to help him move faster. I would yeah. say his main thing is a rescue hero, and that's it. Mm -hmm. His attack and defense aren't great, so he wouldn't. In terms of protect the objective or seize the bad guy, mm -hmm. he wouldn't do very well. But in terms of trying to free people from something, he'd be excellent at it. Because you don't need to be smart to think save. And you don't have to be smart to share your sugary sweets with people who are in panic. Yep. 10 grams. 10 grams. Oh, shit. Uh, increases strength fivefold for three minutes. 10 grams. I okay. just mixed all of the numbers up. Ooh, I had okay. all the right numbers, but they were mixed up. He's five times stronger for three minutes with 10 grams of sugar. Oh, damn, dude. I think maybe he'll need some kind of intelligence with him. <laughs> Sato, do this. No, Sato, go through the debris. Sato, go through the debris. <laughs> we didn't talk about Sue, but I think Sue's actually really good. And she- We didn't, we didn't talk about uh, Midoriya either. We didn't really talk about right. Midoriya. We didn't really talk about Shoto, Bakugo, Sue, or Krishma because their abilities are very, very well-rounded. Same thing with uh, mm. Momo. There's not much you can do to really improve it outside of just, just control learning it. it better and mm. know how to use yourself Effectively better. better. Yeah. Sue's also the same case as well. She is going to show off something very impressive, but that's going to be later. Because mm. um, she has really good, uh, what's it called? Oh, I, wow. I already I know her, yeah. her secret ability. Uh, it makes excellent defense and excellent spec ops. Mm -hmm. She's just a really good she's, student. She's excellent all around. Yeah. Outside of Momo be just being the smartest, so able to find herself around every situation, Sue, just in a general sense, is the most well-rounded student. Haga Curry is kind of hard to really pinpoint as far as just like, what can she improve on? Because what you see, what you get. She can get a lot of intelligence. Sure. And she has decent attack just because she's sneaky. Her defense wouldn't be too great. I don't see, I don't think she's very strong or has high uh, combat capabilities. Mm -hmm. She can blind people for a short moment because she can reflect light, but mm, that's, that's only so much for so long. In terms of rescue, That's kind of she's too. as good as just a normal bystander. Mm -hmm. I don't think we missed anyone. Um, Aoyama. Oh shit, where, and, where's that boy? Oh, there he is. Like, he keeps popping what the hell? Popping out because Mineta keeps like squeezing in right here. Look at Mineta just trying to like take peeks at both pages. Mm -hmm. I think I know what he's, what's what's to come about his costume change, but essentially, it's better for him to use less of the naval laser and also transfer it to different points of his body. You know, so it's essentially finger guns. Mm -hmm. To have a better direction because, like, he can't always rely on, like, getting on his, like, standing, like, suplex-like and just, like, shoot up. Some sort of directional, like, uh, fiber optics. 
picture. Yeah. Fiber optics that leads to his finger. That way it controls the light along a line. Yeah. And out his finger. Just... Yeah. And he... I think at that point it would use a lot less of his naval laser power. So he'd be able to use it a lot longer. Mm -hmm. The down issue is like his drawback too. Just the fact that he only has like a, maybe like a full second before like he upchucks. And that's what I'm saying. Like, I think that's based off of the volume of light that he's creating. So if he uses his finger, if he uses finger guns, if he's able to channel just a little bit at its, a little bit of the laser at a time, mm -hmm. just enough to power the, the finger guns, he could do it a lot longer mm -hmm. and do a lot more focused and sustained damage. So if he can do that, offensive capabilities skyrocket because there's not much you can do to stop a fucking laser. Defensive capabilities, mm. I mean, average, I would say, just because. He has a high attack quotient. You could try to do offense as best defense type of. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. Like yeah. just because his, just because his attack, his attack potency is so high, he doesn't have a negligible defense like uh, Toru does. Intelligence gathering. He could. It's average. It, it's it, just it's it, a normal person. It's a normal person, so it's negligible. I would consider a normal person a zero. Because <laughs> it's not a heroic standard. All right. Well, with him, you can't expect most out of him, but you can expect high power and a lot of twinkling. And with that, I would say he'd make a decent enough in terms of search and rescue. Okay. Because just like he did that we just saw in the... What the fuck is, are they getting? The provisional license. license. He can summon four a lot of people to help out in a situation yeah he has that ability to recall people because everyone can recognize the naval laser yeah he would make a really good like whistle mm -hmm. in terms of like if he finds someone and he himself can't help them mm -hmm. he could definitely summon more people to the area okay. and help and get things accomplished that he could himself not okay uh i think that's it that's everybody wow this was long. Yeah, this is. Yeah, I also apologize if I just like look dead ass sleepy because it's just been like us like really processing all this information for long periods of time. We've been going at this for about an hour. Yeah. It's seven point two. You and I did like a half hour video on new quirks that we think would be cool and their downsides to it, mm -hmm. along with how to like better implement better. it. Mm -hmm. And then we just did this where we looked at. A majority of class 1a and thought of ways to improve their course Each and analyzed how they would how they would go in the four fields of her heroism okay For a yeah. yeah so i think we should just leave it at that i think right now we're just doing this based off of like what we know mm -hmm. i mean like who knows maybe rocket will actually do more focuses on like physical stuff and and then I um, will do more like search and rescue and everything like that. But that's for something in the future. This is kind of like what we hypothesize based on like what information we're given and how better to use their quirks. Mm -hmm. I think the only person, the only few people we can really talk about, we can talk about is like Midoriya uh, because he changes a lot. Uh, Toroki because it's kind of self-explanatory, I guess, because it's all based on him and Bakugo because he's already developed it to a point where I can't really see much change unless... Honestly, the list that we have here with these characters, that kind of goes in the order of how much we know about them. Mm -hmm. So the first four in this order are Izuku Midoriya, Shota Toriyoki, Katsuki Bakugo, Ochiko Uraraka, and then we have Momo Yayoi Rose. In that order, that's the five people that we know the most about and their stories. And everyone else, we have to stay seeing the later date to see how they apply their quirks mm -hmm. if they decide to evolve it further. And our knowledge of them is shuffled between them because Tanya's like way down the list, but mm -hmm. we know in like in terms of his character just a little bit less than we do do about Momo. Yeah, it's a good thing to bring it out right here because later down the line we are going to see like the greatest application like of a quirk, and it is it's just super cool. So I hope that a lot of them can like take influence on that and really deep down dig deep in like the origins and from the simple application and see what you can do and in different scenarios. You know what happens after this. Yes. So you know about the time quirk. No, I do know about the time quirk. Cool quirk. It's a cool ass quirk, but it's very limited. 
It's extremely limited. It's so fucking limited. It's so limited that it's like we can't even use it now. I guess that we'll just call it for now and then we'll jump back to this next time and we'll probably just talk about our our top whack <laughs> our whack ass quirks. We could also talk about like the most like um useless quirks that are already pre existing, but we can also just come up with our favorites that we can come up with that are just absolutely useless, uh, clean poop. Okay, we can't come up with our own <laughs> worst ones because we can come up with some stupid fucking ones. <laughs> like the ability to shrink your fucking nails. I don't remember that one, but shit. <laughs> that is useless. <laughs> shrink your own nails. Yeah. <laughs> Look what I can do. Ah! Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> you want to talk about useless quirks? Shrinking the length of your nails. You know what? It, you know what it helps you not do? Have to cut your nails. That's it. Well, that is pretty useful, I guess. <laughs> That's not useful. I don't cut my nails. They just fucking break after a certain length, and then I just have shorter nails. You know what another useful quirk would be? Never being able to cut your hair, or never having to cut your hair. Oh, you it, mean it, being a Saiyan? I guess so. Being a say, where you just, <laughs> the same quirk, <laughs> where you're just stuck with the same hair length. You can cut it, but it doesn't grow. My quirk is prideful prince. I just get really angry <laughs> when people talk about my pride. <laughs> yeah, I have the Broly quirk. I get really strong around people that make me cry. Well, yeah, I guess we'll end it here. So, thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys want to see more of our uh, discussions on my here and whatnot, please be sure to like the video and also subscribe to the channel. Everything you want to know about us as far as social uh, media, Patreon and whatnot is in the link in the description below. So, you can check that out. Uh, but otherwise, that's pretty much it. So, thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Hashtag bye, everyone. Burning ears. The ability to hear the conversation whenever you're brought up in one.